So I am pulling this out, and I'm going to be pulling this out. That's hideous. And then I'm going to sand the surface, and I'm going to try and create a aged copper effect on the countertops because this peach is really disgusting. Concrete to stick to any surface you need to make sure that the surface is going to be porous enough to so it will adhere to it. So you've got to really sand the surface down really well and it should stick just fine. And I'm just using 150 grit sandpaper and I'm just going to do it by hand. You can see I'm creating little scratches in here and that should be all we need. Now we're all finished ooh, sanding. So the surface is all prepped. Now normally, before when I did concrete, I taped the wall and taped off all the areas that I didn't want concrete to get on. And I learned my lesson, don't do that. And the reason why is because the concrete will harden and then you can't remove the tape. So I'm going to be using um, some tools, but mostly I'm gonna be using my hands. So when you get the concrete around here, I'll show you how to make it so that it doesn't stick. So, but for right now, the surface is all sanded and she's ready. ready to mix my concrete for the countertop. And I'm just gonna use the Henry's Feather Finish. And uh, that's what we have on our kitchen countertops, as you can see. It's very easy to mix, but it's really important not to mix too much because it dries very quickly. And if you do that, if you make too much and it dries as you're going, then it's not any good. So what I'm going to do first is I'm going to mix this up and then I'm going to add my copper pearl powdered pigment. And so hopefully we'll get it nice and sparkly and coppery. But I'm going to mix this up first and then mix that in there so it gives it kind of a marbly effect. And then I can add more or less pigment uh, depending on how it goes. If I need less pigment, I'll mix up more concrete. But So I'm going to get started. As I go, now like this consistency is really good. But I think I might make a little bit more. One thing I'd like to add though is always wear gloves because I made the mistake of not using gloves the last time and it killed my fingernails and it killed my hands. So I'm going to mix up just a little bit more and then I'm going to add my pigment right now. I think I'm going to use most of this bottle and just add a little bit more. There we go. And I just keep adding water until I get the consistency that I like. But you can see it's a beautiful coppery color. And I kind of like it that it's a little bit marbly. What I'm going to do is just put it on here. And normally I would use a trowel, but the trowel's going to be way too big for this. So I'm just going to use this little decal thing and just kind of spread it around. So as you can see, it looks really like a dark brown, but as it starts drying, all of that shiny copper is going to start showing through. So, and your first layer is going to be thin. Don't worry about having it too perfect because it's going to be real thin, but you're going to add more layers as you go and when you get a little spot like that that means there's something hard on your there's like a piece that's hard Let's see I'm using this sponge and the reason why I'm using the sponge originally was so that I could get back behind here However, I'm thinking that I'm going to use this sponge, even though I'm going to sand it, I'm going to still use this sponge so that I can get some texture in, uh, in the concrete so that when I apply my turquoise wax, I'm going to have lots of little crevices for it to, to hit and hold. The other thing I like to do is wait until the end, until my concrete has thickened up quite a bit, as you can see, so that I can mold the sides. So once it's really thick, you can start applying it to the sides, 
and working it with your hands. You'll be able to smooth it down with the, uh, the sander or the sandpaper afterwards, but that'll help you get it applied. If you try and do it too wet, it's going to be a disaster. But just kind of mold it with your fingers. Again, we're going to be going over this with sandpaper, so I'll be able to get more of a desired softness that I want. But we're getting there. After you're all done applying it, then you can go with a wet paper towel and kind of clean up the little areas like here. But it's much, much better to do it that way than to try and tape it off and remove the tape. So you, as you can see, we have pretty much one layer on that I'll go through and do some finishing touches on. We'll let this completely dry and then we'll sand it and go for see the layer. countertop is dry now and ready for the second coat. If you look real close, you can see under here that there's all kinds of sparkle. The copper's coming out, so can't wait to get going. Once we sand it, some more of that will show. So on to our second so, coat. As you can see, I've got the last coat on there, and as it's drying, I took my Copper Pearl X um, powder, pigment powder, put a little bit of water in it, and made these little copper-like rivers on here, or forms on here. I'm going to let that dry, then I'm going to sand it, and once again, do the copper over the top, and then I'm going to wax it, and we'll see how that turns out. But I'm going to let it over dry, or dry overnight for now. So I'm just putting the last finishing touches of the wax on the countertop, and what I've done is I have um, decided to do it just on the edges and around harder surfaces so you can get kind of a, a picture of it just being aged. So I'm just putting it on here. I'm making sure to blend it in really well so it just doesn't look put on. It just looks really blended and like it's worn away into that. So once I've gotten this on there all the way, then I'm going to um, put another couple drops of the copper over the top, kind of blend it in so that this just looks like it's all aged copper. So we'll see how it looks when we're all done. Okay, so as you can see, I've, I put the uh, copper right over the top of the blue and just kind of blended it in a little bit so the blue is just kind of barely peeking out. So you can see how it's blended just a little bit more and it's just starting to look like just old aged copper. I'm really digging this. You can see I'm just blending that really well. So what I'm doing is just taking a little bit, putting it on my finger, you can see. And then I'm just going right over the top of this just to make it kind of more not so obvious, just kind of ages it a little bit. Okay, so I wanted to show you how I'm getting this really super coppery look. And as you can see, I've already put some wax in the corners. Just a little bit of wax here and there just to make it look really aged. And then what I'm doing is I'm taking the remnants of my Pearl X, putting a little bit of water in it, and then just slowly pouring it on the countertop and then rubbing it in. You can see the little pool of copper right there. The water soaks in and then the copper stays on top. So I'm just kind of moving it around with my fingers and making sure that I don't have any um, finger marks. So I'm letting that copper kind of just get into the countertop and soak in the water and leave the copper remnants on top, making sure that it's really super shiny. So hopefully when we're all done, it'll look uh, like I just have a copper countertop with a little bit of that 
color and and I like to go right over the top of that wax too so that it looks more aged so let's see how it looks okay. when it's all done been using the sewn the stone spray and seal and I used it last night and I don't really care for it so I um, left it overnight and added just a little bit more wax but you can see how leaving it overnight kind of gave you some discoloration and stuff I actually really like that so I'm gonna leave that and then today I think I'm gonna be putting a um, polyurethane coat over the top because I love the finish I love the discoloration that the the spray and seal left but um, I added a little bit more of the the wax and uh, I think once we give it a, a polyurethane coating it's going to be perfect Is the finished sink and as you can see it's got some of the beautiful little patina stuff on it and it's got a lot of shine it looks metallic I'm not sure how that comes across on film but it seems to be a showstopper and we love it what about the backsplash the backsplash is all finished this is just the paint stir sticks I get from Home Depot and some of this I did with crackle paint and over here I did uh, I did white paint and I sanded it mostly off and then put um, stain over the top of that to make it look aged. So that was free. And we used a little tiny bit of concrete that we already had so that didn't cost us anything. And uh, the most we spent really was on the copper. The copper and the sealer. So the copper cost seven dollars and the sealer cost nine. So everything else was pretty much we had. Good job.